So let's look at this problem. Uh, you have two random variables x and y with, with some joint density function x, y. This is given. We want the density function of z where z is uh, square root of x squared plus y squared. So that's generally like the magnitude. If x and y are the real and imaginary parts of a complex random variable, then this surely represents the amplitude or the magnitude. So if you look at fz z, so that is probability of uh, z less than or equal to z, but z is given to be square root of x squared plus y squared less than or equal to z. So essentially, we, uh, which is the same as probability of x squared plus y squared less than or equal to z squared. So we identified this as the interior of a circle with the radius of z. Uh, so this is x, this is y, uh, so this is uh, <coughs> z. So if this point is uh, x, y, uh, so notice that uh, y goes from minus z to z, and x goes from this place to this place. So in terms of y, of course, x is uh, minus square root of z squared minus y squared. Uh, to x is square root of because z squared, you can see here, uh, x squared plus y squared is z squared, so x squared is uh, z squared minus y squared, less than or equal to. So of course we can write this as the joint density function inside this circle, evaluated, dx dy. So x goes from minus square root of z squared minus y squared to square root of z squared minus y squared. And y goes from minus z to z. So now we need to take the derivative of uh, this with respect to z of the distribution function. Uh, except that the uh, problem on the right side is the variable is also there all over the uh, limits. So in which case we could use the Leibniz rule which says that if a function and the variable is also in the limits as well as the integrand, then its derivative with respect to that variable has essentially three terms. Derivative with respect to the top term with respect to x. Then in the variable you substitute the top limit. Do the same thing on the denominator with a negative sign. Then keep the limits as they are and take the derivative with respect of the integrand with respect to x. So if you do that, we can do this systematically. Derivative of the top limit is 1. And remember, this integration is with respect to y. This is with respect to x. So when you substitute for y, z, notice that this limit becomes 0 to 0, so no contribution. Uh, here also, when you take uh, then minus the derivative of the bottom limit, which is minus 1. But when you substitute minus c in terms of y, this becomes 0 to 0, so no contribution. And so we only need to worry about the third term. Third term is we just need to take the derivative with respect to this quantity. So we start with the top limit. The derivative is 1 over 2 square root of uh, uh, 2 square root of z squared minus y squared. Uh, then the derivative of the, in, uh, the in quantity within the square root, that will be 2z, so 2 cancels. Uh, then we substitute, remember this integral is with respect to x, so instead of x I substitute z squared minus y squared. So that's one term. I do the same thing with the denominator, with a minus sign, so minus ma minus becomes plus, so you get z over square root of z squared minus y squared. And you substitute the bottom limit, which is minus z squared minus comma y squared comma y. And then the derivative of the third term, which is independent of z. So I'll rewrite the result here. Uh, so we have the answer, actually. It's minus z to uh, z. Uh, z over square root of z squared minus y squared fxy 
square root of z squared minus y squared comma y uh, plus fxy minus square root of z squared minus y squared comma y dy. Uh, so the classic problem is to try this out on when x and y are jointly Gaussian uh, with the zero mean and variance uh, <coughs> equal variance. Let's say sigma squared, sigma squared, and the co correlation coefficient is zero. In other words, x, y are independent uh, uh, Gaussian random variables. Uh, independent and identical because they have equal variance. Uh, then of course the joint density function of x and y is uh, 1 over 2 pi sigma squared e raised to minus x squared plus y squared over 2 sigma squared. So I'm going to plug this in here so that fcc is minus z to z uh, z over square root of uh, z squared minus y squared 1 over 2 pi sigma squared e raised to minus instead of x squared we put uh, z squared minus y squared uh, plus y squared here over 2 sigma squared uh, plus we do one more time instead of x I put uh, with minus of that quantity but when I square I get the same term so rather than write it up, I'm just going to multiply by 2 d, uh, dy. Uh, so there will be 2 times this. So 2, 2 cancels. Notice that this y squared, y squared cancels. So if I simplify so far, this becomes 1 over pi sigma squared. Uh, z goes outside, e raised to minus z squared over 2 sigma squared goes outside, right? because e raised to minus sigma squared over 2 sigma squared goes outside. So the integral is minus z to c square root of uh, uh, z squared minus y squared dy. This is the only place where y is coming. But notice that this is an even function in y and this is a <coughs> uh, so this is two times the limits from 0 to c. So we get a 2 back here, this is 2. And to simplify this, we could use uh, y equal to uh, sine theta, I believe, of z sine theta. So z squared minus y squared is uh, z squared cos squared theta. And the dy is uh, z cos theta d theta. So this integral becomes integral when y is 0, theta is 0. When y is z, c, c cancels. So theta, sine, sine, theta, sine theta equal to 1 is theta is pi by 2. Uh, dy is uh, z cos theta d theta. Square root of this quantity is square root of this. That's uh, z cos theta. So z cos theta cancels. So the answer is pi by 2. Uh, so we multiply by pi by 2 here. So pi cancels with pi, 2 cancels with 2. So the density function turns out to be z over sigma squared e raised to minus sigma squared over 2 sigma squared for z positive, of course. So this is the classical Rayleigh density function. Uh, so the answer is, if x and y are independent Gaussian, uh, then square root of x squared plus y squared is Rayleigh random variable. What we mean by Rayleigh is that the PDF has this shape. So if you plot the PDF, it looks like this. Because at uh, z equal to 0, of course it is 0. 
so it will uh, then it will die off in e, e raised to minus z squared uh, term. So the simple result is independent equal variance and zero mean Gaussian uh, random variables. The magnitude, which is square root of x squared plus y squared, is Rayleigh. If any one of these conditions is violated, in other words, if they are not independent, if they are dependent or non-zero mean or unequal variance, this result is no more, no longer Rayleigh. But uh, so the next simplest case is when the means are a non-zero, that will be Rishian and the, uh, the case after that would be, you, you can uh, increase e e complications, you make them unequal variance, you will have, of course there will be some density function, but it will not be Rayleigh. And finally you can have unequal variance, and then you can have a case where they are in, uh, independent, in other words, rho is not zero, uh, they are dependent, rho is not zero. That will also be not really. Then you consider the general case, dependent, unequal variance, and uh, even that can be done, but that will be some other time.